I recently caught up with Dr. Katie Becklin, who has a paper in Journal of Ecology on how willows indirectly reduce our muscular mycorrhizal fungal colonization in understory communities. Hi, my name is Katie Becklin, and uh, I'm a, a plant community ecologist. I'm currently working at the University of Kansas as a postdoctoral researcher with uh, Dr. Joy Ward. Um, I received my degree in biology from the University of Missouri in 2010. What problem in ecology were you trying to solve with your study? Well, what I'm really interested in is how species interactions vary across space and time and the implications of that variation for ecological communities. So when I started working in Colorado, um, I got interested in mycorrhizal associations, and one of the things that I noticed first was that the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi that are colonizing herbaceous plants, um, that these interactions seem to vary in a predictable manner across this willow meadow ecotone. So the, these AM fungi were colonizing plants growing in the open meadow more heavily than they were colonizing plants in the willow understory. So I was really interested in figuring out what was driving this pattern in colonization since we know from a lot of other work that mycorrhizal associations really play a big role in shaping plant communities. Right. So what was your main finding or, or findings of the study? Well, we designed this experiment really to test whether or not willows are negatively affecting these AM fungi either by uh, through above-ground competition for light, um, below-ground interactions with ectomycorrhizal fungi, or through leaf litter deposition. And our results indicate that interactions with these ectomycorrhizal fungi and leaf litter, leaf litter deposition are much more important than above-ground competition for light in this system. Um, mm -hmm. So these ectomycorrhizal fungi that are associated with the willow hosts uh, may be competing with our muscular mycorrhizal fungi for the same set of resources um, and leaf litter deposition seems to be enhancing the negative effect of willows by stimulating colonization by ectomycorrhizal fungi. There's also some evidence that this leaf litter may have some allelopathic effects on the AM fungi as well. So Overall, what we're finding is that willows are, have this indirect effect on the AM fungi that are colonizing understory plants. So, so you, you worked with uh, willow in this study. Um, what, what, uh, what about other plant species that have uh, EMF um, in our willows? Do you think they would have the same impacts um, as willows would have? And, and are willows um, you know, special mm -hmm. for some reason? Um, in this system, the, the willows are the primary species that are right at the forefront of tree line, mm -hmm. but there's also a number of pine species. Um, it, spruce is particularly common at our site, and we have done a little bit of work with uh, the spruce trees as well, okay. just looking at basic surveys of what's colonization in plants growing underneath the spruce versus different distances away from the spruce. And they also seem to be showing the same pattern that colonization of these understory species is reduced when they're growing um, directly underneath the spruce canopy. Um, so I do think that there's probably some similar patterns going on, at least in this system. Uh, so you showed that leaf litter has negative effects on, on AMF. Uh, and I wonder if, uh, like, if you get, you know, big... Uh, flushes of herbivores that hit up plant a willow really hard and that could then influence um, the, the effect that leaf litter has on, on AMF. Is that possible? I actually think that's a really interesting question because you could imagine that herbivores and herbivory um, could impact willows either by reducing total leaf area and thus uh, leaf litter inputs mm -hmm. but at the same time they could uh, affect plant chemical defenses right. and both of those mechanisms might be expected to influence these AM fungal um, associations in different ways so based on the work that we've done um, reducing leaf litter would be might be expected to weaken the negative effect of willows on AM fungal colonization mm -hmm. but on the other hand if allelopathy is a really important factor as has been suggested with our leaf litter experiment, 
then increases in plant chemical defenses could have the opposite effect on these understory AM associations. Well, um, I like to think about ecological evolutionary ecology types of questions. So, so do you think um, if the, the effects you've seen in your study could have um, you know, evolutionary effects on, on, on plant species in the system? Uh, well, a lot of these, uh, these alpine plants grow in both open meadow and willow understory habitats. Mm -hmm. So for, for these species, what the willows are really doing is generating variation in AM colonization within populations, mm -hmm. which could lead to fitness differences and evolutionary effects. Um, but what I think is actually really interesting is how variation in mycorrhizal associations might impact selection by other organisms like pollinators and herbivores. Mm -hmm. Um, for example, if mycorrhizal associations are impacting plant traits that attract pollinators, then variation in colonization across this willow meadow ecotone could generate mosaics in the strength of selection by these pollinators. And I think that's a really interesting question and we're really just kind of starting to, to address that question experimentally. So is, is Salix glauca dioecious or? Yes, it is. Okay, um, so and that's something that I did consider when I first started this experiment because we've shown in previous work at, on Penn Mountain that uh, male and female willows differ in some traits that you might expect to influence their interactions with ectomycorrhizal mm -hmm. fungi as well as resource availability to neighboring plants. Okay. Um, for example, these, the, the female willows at our site have really high phosphorus requirements compared to the males and they're also less drought tolerant so they require mm -hmm. more water. Okay. Um, Based on these differences, I initially expected ectomycorrhizal associations to differ between male and female willows and for females to have a stronger negative effect on the AM fungal community. When I looked at the data, what we saw was that ectomycorrhizal fungal colonization and diversity didn't differ between male and female willows. Um, however, there is some support for the hypothesis that female willows might have a stronger effect on the AM fungal communities. I haven't really de delved into this question uh, much more than that, but it's definitely yeah. something that would be interesting to pursue in the future. How general do you think, do you think your results are? Um, do you think they apply to you know, only the, the plots that you studied or sort of the general area in Colorado or, or what, what are your feelings on the generality? Yeah. Well, we have, we have done some surveys at other sites in, um, similar sites in areas of Colorado looking at open meadow will understory habitats and we found that that same pattern of higher colonization by arbuscular mycorrhizal mm -hmm. fungi in the open meadow. So my expectation if I was going to go in and do this experiment again at other sites is that we'd see sort of similar um, similar mechanisms at play where underground processes are really important and that there might be some interactions with between these two fungal guilds. Um, I also think more broadly that you know there's a lot of support for the idea that um, plant fungal feedbacks can generate variation in mycorrhizal associations that impact plant communities. Um, mm -hmm. So I think what's interesting about this study and some others like it is that we're really looking at how different guilds of mycorrhizal hosts and fungi might be creating feedbacks that impact each other. So what do you think are the consequences uh, for, the, for the field of, of this paper? Well, as an alpine ecologist, I often think about what's limiting the upper, the upper limits of a given plant species. But this project got me thinking about how we need to really consider what's impacting the lower range limits as well and how the expansion of tree line might eventually influence the distribution of tundra species. Um, mm -hmm. these, uh, these kinds of below ground processes and plant fungal feedbacks I think are going to be really important in a lot of ecosystems for determining species interactions as well as these ecotonal boundaries. Yeah. So what, what do you think was the most challenging uh, part of the study? Well, the, the Alpine is a really beautiful and challenging place to do work, to do mm -hmm. research. 
Um, I would go out for my field season, which usually amounted to about two months in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got there, I never knew if I'd be able to start working right away or if the mountain mm -hmm. would be covered in five feet of snow. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a relatively remote location, so we didn't have access to your traditional labs, and we mm -hmm. had to really um, kind of get creative in, in terms of setting up the facilities to process and analyze our samples. Um, this was also a project that would not have been possible if, had not, if there had not been the work of um, previous graduate students at Mizzou who collected these willow cuttings and grew them in greenhouses so that they were mm -hmm. available for us to actually use in this experiment. So yeah. there was a lot of work that went into making this, this experiment happen. Yeah. Uh, so do you have any uh, interesting stories from the, from the field or lab from mm -hmm. this research? Um, well, this isn't really about research, but uh, while, while do, working on this project, I lived in the small town of Fairplay, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very unique and interesting place. Um, it's a, a town that's really rich in mining history, and they celebrate that history every summer with their Burrow Days Festival. Mm -hmm. um, and for a few summers, my field assistants and I got a chance to race llamas. Mm -hmm. on a 5k wow. run through town <laughs> and uh, you know yeah. if you've ever raced a llama you know that running with a llama is not an easy um, experience they they really have minds of their own and they might stop in the middle of the road they might go the wrong way right. and uh, it's it's really an interesting experience and the town of Fairplay is just a really interesting and fun place to work so.